time now, just coming up to 90 minutes past seven GMT. One of the abiding themes of modern international journalism is how to cover Africa. More often than not, the stories that we bring you from Africa are of conflict, hardship and poverty. But the president of Ghana, John Kafour, who's also the head of the AU at the moment, has urged the world's media to paint a less gloomy picture. He said corruption, crime and civil wars should not be reported as if they were inherently and exclusively African problems. And yesterday, the Nigerian government cancelled an advertising contract it had with the American network CNN because of reporting which it said was denigrating to the Nigerian people. These are just some of the African stories covered here on the BBC World Service over the past 24 hours. Four years after the conflict in Darfur began, rebels in the Sudanese province have told the BBC that they will keep fighting the government in Khartoum until... A British court today had to decide whether Zambia should pay well over $40 million of debt to an investment fund called Donegal International. During the last three days, the people of Guinea in West Africa have been living under martial law. Their president, Lansana Conte, transferred power to the military earlier this week following a month of countrywide demonstrations in which more than 100 people have been shot dead by the security forces. Now, there are renewed... Well, that was just over the past 24 hours. Joining us now is Ruben Abati, chairman of the editorial board at the Nigerian Guardian newspaper. Um, Ruben, all those were facts. They actually happened. But do you think that Africa gets a bad press from the international media? Well, I think that the question to ask when dealing with any uh, material in the media is to ask, is it the truth? Is it fair? Is it balanced? Is it accurate? In many of the uh, cases that uh, Africans have complained about, uh, when you check the stories, you see that the stories cannot really fail the test of truth. They cannot fail the, truth, the test of accuracy. So if the story is true, it's accurate, then where is the problem? I think that, you know, um, most of the people who complain about the coverage of Africa in the West are complaining about balance. They, they seem to have concluded that there is a certain uh, deliberate attempt to report only the negative stories from Africa without looking at possibilities, because Africa also is uh, a continent of possibilities. But what I note is that the people who complain are the leaders of African countries, not the people. Because the African people, if anything, are grateful that, in fact, you know, the media, internationally and locally, are portraying the challenges that they face on a daily basis. Okay, well, briefly, uh, briefly tell us what's on... If not pleased with what is portrayed, uh, it should provide them an opportunity to look inwards, to, to respond to the questions that have been raised, because, indeed, in Africa, there is a crisis of governance. Okay, briefly, Ruben, what sort of stories are being covered uh, about Africa on the front pages of Nigerian newspapers this morning? Well, I have with me uh, this morning, I've uh, gone through three newspapers. If you check the uh, front page of the punch uh, and you do a word analysis, uh, what you'll find is a concern with the governance process, the political process. And if you check the words, you see caution, you see terminate, you see uh, trading of words, you see uh, impeachment, you see collapse. And I mean, that's just one newspaper. Just looking at it, you look at it, you see failure, you see indictment. And you go to another newspaper, say Vanguard, and it's the same thing. Again, end game, a long way to recovery. Buare lashes or passenger, parties get deadline to replace indicted candidates. And you take the Guardian, the newspaper that I work for, there's also the same concern about the crisis in the environment. Theater of absurd in Adamawa, lamentations, um, article ready for the world, arrest of INEC officials. So what you are dealing with really is not just uh, the, the foreign media portraying Africa in a bad light. It is simply that many of these African countries are either failed states or they are traditional states or they are states that are dealing with very serious problems of politics, of organization and of development. Okay, if you take the uh, the British newspapers today, I've just had a quick look through them about uh, to look for African stories. The Independent's got uh, Ivory Coast and Toxic Waste. The uh, Guardian has got a story about Kenyan corruption as well as um, aid, again, again, uh, again portraying uh, Africa as a, a poor continent that needs help. The Independent, again, to, is going back to the genocide in Rwanda. It seems to bear out the theory that the international media um, looks on the gloomy side, which is what um, the President of Ghana, John Kafour, was saying. But you, you, you're suggesting that it is simply a question of balance because all those stories are real stories yes the, the stories are true it's a question of balance in my view and then if i may add another point um you know sometimes there is a case of the allegation of exaggeration on the part of foreign correspondents 
Now, we must realize that journalists are human beings. Many of the foreign correspondents that report Africa are, are for the most part, parachuters. Uh, some of them are accused of having uh, certain attitudes, even when they are African. Take the report on CNN. The reporter is an African, Jeff Konange. And, you know, he's criticized by a lot of Africans. But I tell people, what he has reported, is it the truth? Is okay. it accurate? Okay, Ruben Abati, we're going to leave it there, but um, Ruben Abati, chairman of the editorial board at the Guardian newspaper in Nigeria, thanks very much indeed for joining us.